Tim McDonald here taking you into your Fox 25 sports update. A busy Thursday bringing some names to Foxborough. Day two of training camp causing a buzz. Many fans excited to come out and see Chad Ochocinco and Albert Hainsworth finally put on that Pats jersey. And believe it or not, one of those players now has a day of practice under his belt. In a morning practice session, as the team came onto the field, fans and teammates got their first glimpse of Chad Ochocinco, the eccentric addition to the Pats receiving corps. He was seen chatting with Brady and taking reps as he adjusts to the new offense. And in the afternoon, the receiver suited up in his number 85, of course. Because the trade was reportedly official without a contract extension, Ocho Cinco was allowed on the field right away. Pats QB Tom Brady is excited for what his new receiver can bring. I've known Chad for a long time, so um, I've watched him for a long time, and, and uh, you know, he brings a lot of energy and, to the team. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to everyone being out here and trying to get better. Well, as I said yesterday, I think you consider when you bring a player onto your team what what role that player has and how you think that player will fit onto your team and, and um, you know, all the things that come with it. And then you decide whether you want to make that addition or not. And some familiar faces may not be in Foxborough this season. The team announcing some cuts today. One of them, former first-round draft pick Ty Warren, the Pats D lineman who won two Super Bowls with the team. He sat out 2010 with a hip injury that was really unexpected. Another player let go is often injured offensive tackle Nick Kazier and tight end Algie Crumpler. Additions to the roster were highlighted by the third round draft pick and former Arkansas Razorback standout QB Ryan Mallett. And some good news for New England, the biggest free agent on the market will not be landing in New York. The Jets missing out on the not cornerback Namdi Asamoa. The former Raider was rumored to be leaning toward the Jets, but instead, he'll be flying to Philly to join the Eagles. Asamoah signs a five-year, $60 million deal and plays alongside former Patriot Asante Samuel. And the Red Sox taking on a team they've had some trouble with this season, the Chicago White Sox. Sweeping Boston, they swept Boston when they visited it back in May. Tonight, the Sox hoping the results would be a little different as the knuckleballer Tim Wakefield went for career win number 200. And there's Wake coming off a game where he earned his 2000th career strikeout, looking for another milestone. Top of the third, the Red Sox striking early. Salty with a solo shot, his ninth of the year, and it's 1-0 Boston. Bottom four, Wakefield cruising. He fooled Paul Canerco here. Wake only gave up one hit through the first five innings. Top six, a big opportunity for the Red Sox. Bases loaded for you. He goes down looking. Boston still leads 1-0. Bottom six, the White Sox play small ball. Juan Pierre bunts to second, gets on a wild pitch to third, and Paul Canerco with a sack fly to bring him home. Chicago ties it at one. Then in the seventh, A.J. Przinski, absolute moonshot home run, a two-run blast to right. Wakefield went seven innings, gave up only three hits, still got the loss. Pedroia's hitting streak ends at 25 games, and the White Sox win, nothing good. Three to one is the final. Despite the fact that the Sox are out of town, baseball fans still filling the seats tonight at Fenway. The Cape Cod Baseball League taking over Yaki Way for their annual All-Star game. The best players in college baseball getting their chance to showcase their talents on a dreamlike stage. And Major League Scouts, they're looking on getting their radar guns ready. The Western Division taking on the East. Bottom first, Eric Stamets from Hyannis lays down a bunt. He beats it out, then Wareham's Max Muncy tries to throw out the runner at third. It goes into the stands. Watch out, a disaster for the East defense. Allows a run to come home, it's 1-0 West. And in the second, East Mays and Cats with a liner into the left field corner. The West throwing the ball all around. Two runs come in for the East. Eastern Division takes a 2-1 lead. Top of the fifth, James Ramsey from Yarmouth Dennis lands a solo shot in the bullpen. Ramsey was named Mr. MVP of the game. The Eastern Division beats the West 4-1. And a couple of quick notes, Red Sox Clay Buckholtz will see a back specialist in LA on Monday to get a new opinion on his injured back. Also, what Red Sox infielder Jed Lowry will spend the next week down in Pawtucket rehabbing his shoulder. I'm Tim McDonald, and this has been your Fox 25 Sports Update.